Hey, what's going on? I am out on my back patio. The sun is setting. You guys got to see this. Anyways. Yeah, so um, I'm sitting out here. I was thinking and uh, talking to some lenders and all that kind of stuff today. And uh, I talked to my, my business partner, Fatty Bomitri, who was my chief investment officer. We were talking about, uh, I don't know, somebody, somebody asked if we had ever lost money on a deal before. And, uh, yo, sorry about that. I'll stay over on this side. So, anyways, I'm talking to some private money lenders. And uh, here, let me show you guys this view again. Boom, boom, boom. The beach with the sunset. Here it comes. Oh, let's get better than that. That's the. The Ravenel Bridge right there. That's Sullivan's Island, and I'm on Isle of Palms. So, anyways, uh, so talking to some uh, question from private money lender today of have we ever lost money on a deal before? And I thought that was a valid question. We got we got it before, but I thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, so let me give you some backstory to this. This is the only apartment building I've ever lost money on. I will say this, I've lost money on a bunch of single family flips because I suck at single family flips. I'm absolutely awful at them. But I've only lost money on one apartment building ever. So knock on wood, right? Um, and I attribute a lot of that to our, our buying criteria and kind of what we do. But um, let me give you some backstory on this. So about two and a half, three and a half years ago, I think it was. Um, I was buying apartment buildings, getting a little bit of momentum, had a few hundred units at the time, and uh, uh, had a buddy chirping in my ear. My buddy's, hey, I got money, I got money, I got 250 grand, hey, I got some cash, let's go buy an apartment, let's go buy an apartment. You hear that shit enough times, you're like, all right, let's go buy an apartment building, right? So um, I start looking around for an apartment building. That's, that's number one. Don't go and buy apartment buildings just because you have money, got it? Because then you start going to look for a deal, just looking for somewhere to place the money and it doesn't necessarily have to be a great deal, right? That was wrong on my part. So that was the first mistake of mine. Second thing is, well, let me just keep on going with the story. So I start looking around and I find a 44 unit apartment building about 10 minutes from my office in Cleveland, Ohio, um, in, a, in a community called Old Brooklyn. And, um, and I knew the owner, it was actually a buddy of mine, and um, knew this guy, we hung out before, We've gone to dinner with our wives, and um, you know, a, a buddy. And so he's like, listen, I'm trying to sell this, I'm focusing on some other stuff, and um, do you want to buy it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. So he's telling me, you know, it's 80% occupied, and um, he's renovated X, Y, and Z, and put this much money in, and this and that, and all this other stuff. So I was able to kind of like assume a loan and then just bring 250 grand and kind of cash him out. And um, that's my buddy, right? Like he's, he's gonna tell me everything. Um, and that was mistake number two. <laughs> Although he's my buddy, um, and listen, this all falls back on me, right? This isn't his fault, um, but it's, I don't know. It leaves a little bit of sour taste in your mouth when uh, uh, you find this out. But I bought this building and I'm thinking I'm going to buy this thing and I'm going to renovate it and I'm going to throw, uh, you know, I don't know, 100000 dollars $150,000 into it and then uh, sell this thing and make about three hundred grand in six months. Okay, That's kind of where I was, where my mindset was because we had management in place. We had all this other stuff that we could just jump in, slam it all out in a few months and then put it back in the market, make $300,000 in less than six months. Boom. It's a good payday. So I, uh, we, we buy the property. And, you know, like, he's like, hey, it's 80% occupied. I look at all the leases. He's got, you know, out of 44 units, there's 35 of them that are uh, I have leases for. He's got a rent roll with 35 names on it and um, uh, all this other stuff. And so my, my issue was that I didn't verify collections on the 80%. So although it was 80% occupied, it was only 25% economically occupied. It was 80% physically occupied with people, but only 25% were actually paying rent. And so I walk into a building that I thought was cash flowing from day one, and all of a sudden, not only is it not cash flowing, but I have to kick out 25 tenants and fight, fire off all these tenants. I'm not collecting rent. I have to spend money on evicting them, and then I have to renovate 25 more apartments than I thought I did. So this project, 
and, and, and this is a different so, sort of deal than what I usually structure my apartments as. Um, my buddy was like, dude, I want to be a 50-50 partner. Let me just put up the cash. Let's just do 50-50, 50-50, 50-50. Don't pay me a prep. Don't do this. Don't do that. And, um, and so like, I'm like, all right, fine. Let's go, just go ahead and do it. And so uh, buy the building, find this all out. We got to go through this process. I think we're gonna make 300 grand in six months, and um, he's gonna make a bunch of money. I'm gonna make a bunch of money, and we're gonna move on with with life. And instead, we own this property for over a year, about a year and a half. It took us to renovate it, it took us to uh, evict all the tenants, renovate it, put all new tenants in place, put good management and everything in place, and then remarket the property. And I ended up selling it a year and a half later, and actually lost about 40 thousand, 40 45 thousand dollars. So, let me go back. I could have gone to my partner who was 50%, 50% ownership and, um, and said, hey dude, sorry, my bad, but you know, we lost money on this. It's $40,000 loss and um, uh, I need you to stroke a check for 20 G's of it. You know, and, and I'll strike a, check, stroke, strike a check for 20 G's, you strike a check for 20 G's and we just lose money and we move on, but you, at least you got your cash uh, back. Actually, you. You get 230 of your 250 back is essentially what it would be. But I didn't want to do that. And, and I mean, again, going back, I was able to find a buyer for this thing. Now, let, let me go back more. Why do I want to sell it? No. I'm trying to think of like stream of thought consciousness here. Let me just go through the process. So I, sell, so I sold the building and I went to my investor and I said, dude, you don't have to, let, let me take 100% of the loss. So I stroked a check for $40,000. He did not have to lose any money. He got all 250 grand of his back. And in order to do the right thing, I went to him and I said, listen, man, you didn't make any money on this. Take your money, keep your money. I'm buying this other building over here that has like a million bucks of equity built into it from right, now, from right out of the gate. And I said, dude, I'm gonna give you, it's a little over a million bucks. I said, I'm gonna give you 5% equity in that deal and you don't have to put any money in. Just as a future return on your investment, you're gonna get 5% of that, which is worth 50 grand today. Once it was like fixed up, it was like worth $75,000. So it was about, whatever, uh, it was a, almost a 30% return on investment of, of equity value, right? It's not really cash, but it's equity value. So rule number one, so lesson number one in this whole thing, and actually lesson number like three, is always do the right thing with your investors, right? If I would have said, hey man, you got a stroke check for 20 Gs, you're gonna lose money, you didn't make a return, sorry, too bad, too sad, that reflects poorly on me. It wasn't his fault, it was my fault that me and my team didn't verify the financials. So you gotta take ownership over that. It's not, it's not fun to strike a check for $40,000, but it's the right thing to do. Um, and now he's a big uh, uh, champion and, and cheerleader of mine, um, talking about how I do the right thing, how I got great, you know, uh, moral compass and all this other stuff, right? Um, because I did the right thing with him. So uh, that's a lesson to be learned. Another lesson to be learned is the crazy thing about this. And, and listen, I should have lost way more than that. I should have lost probably a hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars. But the way things fell out, I, I came across a, a motivated buyer with 1031 exchange money out of California who wants a return on investment. Anything better than 3% is amazing to them, right? So he over, not I wouldn't say he overpaid, but he paid a retail premium on this thing. And um, and he had to close quickly. And so we were able to make it happen and uh, I only lost $40,000. I should have lost closer to probably 100, maybe even 150 on this thing. But here's what I, what I love about multifamily. We sold this building because I didn't want to deal with it anymore because it was a C, C plus kind of an area, heavy management intensive, meaning like, I'll give you an example. <laughs> like this is the kind of place where I remember one time my team got a call and it was the dumpster company, and they're like, we can't take the dumpsters, a bunch of stuff on top of it, and uh, you gotta pay somebody else to come out and get it, because we're not gonna empty it all out. And so uh, we send out two guys in a truck, and they empty out, you know, there's mattresses on top, and garbage piled on top of that, and, all, and they get everything on, off of, on top of the dumpster, and then they open up the dumpster, because we have to empty that out, because the trash people didn't take that, and they saw that there was nothing inside the dumpster, meaning, 
a single tenant was too lazy to open up the dumpster, just put their trash on top, and everybody else did the same thing, and it cost me, I don't even know what that was, probably $3,000 to trash out the entire thing, because uh, I still got billed from the, from the trash company too. So like, that's the kind of stuff you deal with in C class and D class areas. And for where my team and I were three years ago was an upward trajectory, and I, and I knew that the, the opportunity cost of us continuing to manage this deal versus just selling it, taking a, uh, you know, taking a loss on it and moving over to bigger, better projects, uh, the opportunity cost would have been greater than the $40,000 that I lost. So there's another lesson for you. You gotta look at the opportunity cost, where are you spending your time on these things? And here's my favorite part, is, is the final lesson. The beauty about multifamily is I could have held on to this thing. I could have held on to it for another probably 24 to 36 months, bumped up the rents every year as the, you know, the, the, uh, the leases came renewed, paid down enough principal to the point where I would have been able to sell it for a profit, meaning I didn't have to lose money on this deal. I chose to lose money on this deal because of the opportunity cost. But the beauty of multifamily is if you have a cash flowing asset that is continuously kicking off cash flow that covers operating expenses, covers debt service, and you know you take any extra money and, and kind of you know uh, uh, pay yourself back for all the money that I outlaid on this thing. Um, you can actually hold on to it, pay down enough principal, let the property appreciate over time, and you don't have to lose. Even if you accidentally pay a retail price or overpay for a property, if you have enough time on your side, you can let the property be paid down on the principal balance on the loan and, and continuously bump rents every single year for the next 10 years and eventually you create enough of a spread there where you have you have enough equity built in where now you can refinance it, you can sell it, you can wholesale it, you can um, uh, refinance it at your cost basis, above your cost basis, you can sell or finance it, do like a wrap mortgage, there's a lot of different options that you can pursue if that's the case. So. I love multifamily, I love it. That's the only deal, multifamily deal, knock on wood again, that I've ever lost money on. And um, the lender did not lose. They actually won in a big way. I chose to lose, so I take 100% ownership over that. And if I didn't want to lose, I wouldn't have to lose. Isn't that remarkable? It's crazy, right? It's amazing. So, love multifamily real estate. Um, you guys got anything going on, hit me up. I'm, all, I'm looking for deals, I'm refinancing eight buildings right now and selling 10. And I'm gonna have, between me and my investors, uh, my investor's gonna get probably like 35 to $40 million back uh, over the course of the next like 60 days. So always looking to, for deal flow. Keep me posted on whatever you guys have. I'll connect you with my uh, acquisitions director, Nick Burton, stud. Um, still always looking for capital though too. So if you do guys, if, if anybody wants to um, talk about you know what it would look like to passively invest and, and partner up with us on that front. Connect with my chief investment officer, Fatty Bumitri. He's an ace. And then um, uh, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about multifamily, I told you guys about this in my last Facebook Live over the weekend, is I got Commercial Empire coming up. It, it is a $5,000 ticket that we're reducing to 500 bucks because it's a two-day virtual now. And um, you know we're, we don't have that, the overhead in order to do that, pull that event anymore, so I'm passing it along to students. And if you've already been out to Commercial Empire, you can come out again for free, uh, this time only, okay? So if you've already been out to Commercial Empire, you can plug in again at no cost. If you have not been out to Commercial Empire, it's 500 bucks, it's, I, I promise you, the best $500 you could spend on education. Um, you should see the reviews, it's just like, it's off the charts on, um, on our reviews and on our student results. It's insane what they're, what they're getting. So um, it's October 29th and 30th, um, vir done virtually, it's gonna be from 10 a.m. Eastern time to 6 p.m. Eastern time, so you West Coasters don't have to wake up too, too early, and um, it's gonna be gangster. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, hit me up, send me a, uh, a, a Facebook message with your email address, and I'll connect you with my director of marketing, uh, Kate, and she will send you uh, details on, on how to get set up for that. So you guys uh, ever need anything, you know where to find me. Love you, appreciate you, be your best.